start the select board meeting for August 7th, 2019. Um, we are going to start right into the consent agenda. We have some minutes to approve from April 17th, 2019, April 25th of 2019, May 1st of 2019, and May 2nd of 2019. We have several warrants to approve, uh, PR1950, PR2002, PR2003, WP1954, WP1954-S, WP1955, WP1955-S, AP2003, AP2004, AP 2004-2, AP 2005-V. We have a memorandum of understanding between the Town of Hadley and the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District for the hauling and disposal of sludge. We have a Hadley PD resignation of Jose Cabrera. We have permission for use of North, North Hadley Village Hall ball field. Hadley Girl Scout Troop fall sing-along and campfire on September 20th, 2019 from 6 to 8 p.m. We have a Hadley Police Department kennel license fee proposal. We have a COA van driver appointment, Stanley Kroll. A rate authorization for Council on Aging, fiscal year 2020 budget adjustment. A one-day liquor license, malt and wine for North Hadley Sugar Shack bicycle event on August 10th. We have commercial development permitting and inspection protocol. The select board is going to sign off on. We have our accountant services contract, which the select board is asked to sign. And we have a Valley Bike Share Committee appointment of Andy Morris Friedman to represent the town of Hadley for that committee. Do we need to take anything out? Is the police coming tonight? No, no coming. Okay. The Girl Scouts are. Uh, Gene you know, Baxter is uh, Gene Baxter. Uh, is, uh, spearheading this, and she uh, sent along a letter of explanation. But she has uh, got another appointment for tonight, okay. so she shan't be. We're making a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, no. No one. Uh, what's up with the kennel licensing? Exactly. So, so this relates to the solvency of the dog roof welding fund. Uh, so the kennel licensing fee is going. To, the proposal is to increase that by twenty-five dollars for each class of um, inspections for the kennels. Uh, this is for non-commercial. Now, how many do we have? Uh, that I don't know. <coughs> Not many. At one point, they were thinking after the sub-fire station building is uh, built, we're talking about adding a kennel up in that area on that property, because we really don't want to be having dogs brought down to the DPW and stuff, so that's kind of been the works down the line, so. cost us more money to send them to the veterinarians and places like that than if we were to kennel them. Mm -hmm. But this... These are this just fees adjustments. Yeah, fees for kenneling out dogs. This, yeah, this, this has nothing correct. to do with that. Yeah, this no, doesn't I'm have just, anything I'm to do with that. I'm just making a statement that somewhere down the line that that's what we're looking at. Is that all right, John? Yeah, I, okay. I just... I, 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 I don't see, it. I don't see it. any reason yeah. for these fees, that's all. It's to go to the uh, veterinarians and places where we have to well, take dogs. Whenever they go to the veterinarians, they should be able to uh, take them to the vets and it shouldn't have any effect on the police department or us anyway. Isn't this, this is for places that kennel, kennel dogs. dogs. It's like Amherst, yes. we usually take them to Amherst. If you're a pet hotel, correct. no, this is like if you're this a, a pet hotel or hotels. something like that. that. That's what I'm saying, are these yeah. the fees for like the pet hotel? That yeah. was my understanding, yeah. <coughs> Both, I think. It was a little confusing when I read through it, so. I mean, up to 50 dogs. And, um, well, 
everything except for the uh, wastewater agreement. Okay. For me. <coughs> okay. It, well, we voted on that, even though oh, we, we talked about it afterwards. Yeah. I didn't say for any more discussion. I figured we nobody tabled anything, so but we're good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, public comments. Is there anyone here for public comment tonight? Yeah. Okay. Um, we have a 645 appointment with Kestrel Trust. I actually don't think anybody from Kestrel Trust is going to be here tonight. So. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Somebody from Applebee's is here, but do we have to wait until 705? Uh, if you're here, we could do it now, or do we have to wait? David, do we have to wait? Mm -hmm. um, why, don't you, why don't you open the, the hearing, and then we'll close the hearing after 705 in case somebody shows up. It's or do we want to take us 30 minutes to do it. Yeah, why don't we open up the hearing, take care of the business. Don't vote to close the hearing until after 7.05. Okay. Okay. We'll keep things okay, so on. we have an Applebee's change of manager for all alcohol license. Uh, supplied a change of manager um, form. It looks like it's all been filled out or it was just a letter. So I don't know. Yeah, if there's you, a whole bunch of other documents. Other documents. It's got a sense. So whole application. Yeah, it's got information about federal tax ID numbers and social security numbers. Are you the new manager? I am. Yeah. And what's your name? Nicole Oliveira. Okay. Oops. I'm assuming then the packet that we don't have was signed off on by the police. Everybody yeah, everybody's everybody. taking a look at it. So it seems to be fine. I'll make a motion to accept the change of manager for um, all alcohol license for Applebee's. I will second that, pending no further discussion until 7 o'clock. Right. <laughs> so do we, can we vote on it now, or do we oh, wait yeah, to vote? Until, okay. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> okay. Thank you. You're all set, unless somebody yeah, shows up before 7.05. Yeah, yeah, you might want to hang around. Yeah, I'll <laughs> stay. I'm interested. Okay. <laughs> It'd be hard to explain to your supervisor. Uh, <laughs> 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 was good. I left, it was great. Um, so maybe we could just go into new business, uh, get some of these things off the list. Tim uh, from Municipal Building Committee is here if you want to. Right, is anybody else from Municipal Building coming, Tim, or is it just? Oh, I hope so. We'll okay. <laughs> well, let's wait a little bit. Okay. That's what I was thinking. I didn't know if more people would show up since it was after seven ten that we would start. So, can wait. Well, there wasn't real time down on that one. So yeah. We didn't really know. Okay. We can wait a few and minutes. And the weather's a little quirky out there this evening. What do you think? Yeah, I was going to do the senior service director job search update. Uh, the select board are asked to establish a search committee for a new senior services director. Uh, our suggested appointments include David Story, uh, Bruce Brewer with Rosalie Weinberg as his alternate, either Elizabeth Faulkner or uh, Peg Wilson, Evan Bryant from the fire department, Lauren Triggs from the police department, Jane Nevin Smith. Uh, we we're going to do David, but he's going to be on vacation, so he asked to not be on this committee. Um, and two select board members, as well as Suzanne, as an advisory, no vote um, to review the applicants. Yeah, I feel that if I'm on vacation, I'm just going to slow the process down. So, for the sake of expediency, um, find this taking it on their own this one. Seems like a huge committee. Yeah. A lot of people wanted to be involved, yeah. um, and we have, the thought was if we nominate this committee tonight or appoint this committee tonight, uh, we would start reviewing applications as soon as tomorrow and possibly have a meeting either tomorrow or Friday uh, to kind of so get the ball rolling. So how many applications have you got? Eleven. Eleven? Eleven. Wow, okay. Did we average it? Yes, yes, appropriately, and the deadline is Monday. Right? The deadline is Monday. So we were thinking review as many applications as we can this week. Kind that, of. That uh, process started the night that she handed in her resignation? Yep. The night that we announced it here. Right. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so you opened it up then? Yeah, we, we okay. put the job I didn't know out. that it went posted. Okay. 
Um, Eleven's a good number. Most yeah. So, uh, so we need availability. We need, and so we need two select board members. So who's around? This question. I'm happy to be on the committee, but I am on vacation. Not this coming week, but the week after. When is the? When are you trying to meet for the first time? Tomorrow. Is it? Have you checked with anybody this year? Checked with um, Lauren and the fire department. They're Evan. both available tomorrow. Okay. And the senior center people are available tomorrow. Okay. So it's whoever is coming from you folks. Right, but the question is tomorrow when? What time? That's up to you because the rest of us are like, well, they're. No, I meant they already decided that they want it during the day or. The fire station and police station people would like it during the day because they're. Okay. okay, so that leaves me out. Yeah, that's too short of notice for tomorrow for me to make it. Better, so. Yeah, I mean, I've got a. Well, I can ask you if they can do it later. I can do it if it's either like lunchtime or shortly thereafter or towards the end of the day. Yeah, I could do like noon tomorrow, but I can't do one. <laughs> yeah, so, so I've got a client coming at 11, so. Yeah, I've got a call at yeah. one, but other than that. I think noon would be appropriate. We can meet at the senior center because we have a nice conference table. Okay, I mean, if it's noon, I'm not gonna get there till 12, 15. I can't check a client out. Sorry, gotta go. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. We're never gonna start with procedural stuff and talk about how we're gonna do this. And Oh, yeah, I'm, to I'm totally fine. I think you've done this before, too. I have done this before. Jane has a lot of experience, yeah. so she's going to be the head of this committee. <laughs> yeah. So as long as you're okay with me being okay. late, then yeah. I'll just jump in as soon as And the other thing. request I have, hopefully it won't be an issue, but with David withdrawing, which yeah. I appreciate, thank you, we have an even number. So can we appoint both Betty and Peg? Sure. That sounds fine. Yeah. But wouldn't appointing two more people still make it even? No, because we were going to One either or. Gotcha. Okay. So, can we have a motion? Did we make a motion? Yeah, motion to approve this uh, list. Second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> oh, there you go. It's your packet. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I have to put my calendar to it. <laughs> oh yeah, I should do that too. Got your homework in front of you. I'm just writing this down. We do. Uh, all right. We have oh, at least six forty two. Okay. Um Yeah, we're not doing that. Okay, so capital plan requests. So departments are handing in their capital requests, and um, we have a couple of departments that we're going to have to chase a little bit, but that's uh, the usual course of these things. If you could, um, if you could uh, um, have me put together the, the master list of capital requests, and we'll get that off to the capital planning committee, we should be able to get this uh, worked out by the fall town meeting. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to just look at the schedule and make sure we can have a couple meetings with the Capital Planning Committee and yeah. get that all in, in in time. Yeah, they have until October 7th to finish their work, so they've got some time. So we don't really have any votes there, uh, just that we're waiting on some departments to submit their final plans. Valley Bike Share Expansion Meeting. Um, so we've had some progress with the Valley Bike Share Program. Uh, is this what uh, Andy Morris is doing? This is what Andy will be representing us. Uh, there's a meeting on the 21st mm -hmm. uh, with all the current members involved in Valley Bike Share and then all the proposed new members. So I'm, I forget who exactly the new members are. I think it's East Hampton, us, and it's not Holyoke and it's not Chicopee. It might be Chicopee. Um, nice article just ran in the paper tonight, yeah. East Hampton joined. Yeah, East Hampton mm -hmm. just joined. So basically this has kind of been <clears throat> fast-tracked, so to speak, because there was um, with the Joint Transportation Committee and DOT funding, there was some additional money available in this round of funding for DOT projects. And so this Valley Bike Program 
uh, was fast tracked to be on the budget this year instead of four years from now. Mm -hmm. And they would like to have two uh, stations in Hadley at the Mountain, uh, the Hampshire Mall and the Mountain Farms Mall. Um, so David and I are trying to set up a meeting with the, the owners of those two properties and see what we can do to get bikes located there. Um, we still have to work out the details of all this, but in my mind it would be nice to have the bike station somewhere closer to the retail locations that people are going to want to go to instead of having the stations closer to the bike path where people will be walking possibly or leaving bikes in the parking lots, all those different things. So if we could get the stations closer to where they'll actually be, so you know, I see shopping. The Ampos coming down a street from the hospital, Jackson Street. Jackson Street, they're yep. right in front of um, Hampshire Heights. Heights. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was in Worcester. They're, they're in use all the time there. Yeah. In, in uh, I mean, there's downtown Northampton, downtown East Hampton, uh, those, downtown South Hadley. Are those Hadley. the only two spots in Northampton? Oh, no, Northampton, um, they're uh, by Forbes Library, I'm pretty oh, sure. The library, too. there's a, quite so. a few, yeah. yeah. Are these the electric assist ones? Yeah, yeah. 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 And you um, see them all the time on the bike path, I have to say. Yeah, I see them all the time out there. I think this, so I see us fitting in in a way where, you know, I would really like to see a station at Town Hall or at the new library, but... The program is more wanting to get them at these retail locations. So um, with the grant, what would be covered is the station and the bikes. The town of Hadley would have to work out the concrete pad and having electrical nearby for these stations, um, you know, which could cost, I forget the exact numbers, but I wanna say it's $5,000 per pad and however much the electricity could cost to put this in. I thought the plan was to get donations from retail. There, the so the sponsor, so that's another layer. The second <laughs> layer is that the stations need corporate sponsors to fund their year-to-year -year operations. Okay, the sponsorships on the operating side, but the yeah. initial capital? The so initial we capital. Get somebody to donate We capital. could, we could. Do you have CPA for that? I think it's a perfect use of CPA. Yeah, it could possibly be. I was thinking of like uh, getting Mr. Bolduck involved in it with the Pride Station as you, he's got the electric there for the electric cars and things mm -hmm. like that, putting in another pad for the bikes. But, but the, the thing is, it's not really it's conducive not the to the uh, yeah. And, and the, 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 the Valley Bike Share Committee is the, like, they're kind of saying, you need to put them here, or we're not gonna give you guys a grant for the station right now. It, is kind of the vibe I'm getting off that. Let's do it our way or not do it at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, it seems like you've got the Hampshire Mall. You've Yay, got grants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've got Planet Fitness at the Hampshire Mall that's the logical sponsor, and then we have L.L. Bean coming yeah. in mm -hmm. and EMS right at the other mall. Not to well. mention Whole Foods, Walmart, Target. You know, there's a Trader lot of Joe's. potential Trader Joe's. Yeah, so those would probably be the places where people would be visiting on these bikes and there's a lot at UMass too there's a lot of stations there so you know students at UMass would be coming down as well can you put one at North Hadley Fire Station <laughs> I'm just kidding you can if we want to dedicate money Pat to purchase Paul, one there <laughs> uh, the Joyce Chungalo yeah. <laughs> bike station yeah. we could put it on Gloomy Street no problem <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's the update as far as the, that goes. Um, I'm on vacation when they're meeting, so I asked Andy if he would be willing to be part of this, and he's going to represent Hadley at that meeting. Sweet. And more information, I guess, to follow as we meet with those property owners and see what we can do. Can we talk to the CPA people and see if Andy's going to be representing Yeah, he's at CPA, he, yeah. <laughs> You might have more information after the meeting on the 21st, what, what we can do. We might so. get one vote there. Yeah, I would think. I think we might even get two out of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought uh, we were already voted that we weren't going to spend any money on it. If we could get the donations. Yeah, like I think we that's the idea. We were discussing it originally. Yeah, right. we can see. But CPA would have to go to town meeting anyway, if we went that route. Yeah. 
Anything else on that? Just an update? Um, I got that. 650, okay. Let's see. Yeah, I guess. In, do we have any updates on the Mass Works uh, grant application for the West Street Common? I see so, Christopher is here, so. So we have an uh, opportunity for the grant. The deadline is Friday. Uh, Chris is working on the scope of work. Um, do you have any information for us? So we will need a vote of the select board to authorize the application. It's the middle of the application. Tonight. Tonight. What are we asking for in the application? The uh, West Street Common? Yes, the roads. The, the, um, so talking with um, C uh, CPA uh, uh, and, the, and the, uh, Morris, he thinks that uh, the roads may not be, uh, may not meet the requirement for CPA, so we want to use the uh, mass works for the roads. So I, uh, I should be getting uh, all the information by Friday morning. Okay. I, yes. I thought I'd be able to get it today. We had the we had a meeting today, and the engineering firm, the individual who was who was working with me, wasn't among the staff that came. So, but is this for resurfacing the roads? Is that what yes, this is for? Yes, for resurfacing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So MassWorks is a roads program. Uh, you can apply once every three years, and <coughs> typically they give out something like three hundred thousand dollars. Uh, for, for various projects. So the roads around the West Street Common see a lot of traffic for residential streets. So there's a lot of wear and tear and we should uh, to upgrade them. I will just ask this because lots of constituents ask me about this. I live on Middle Street, so West Street, I'm over there a lot is, you know, would we consider putting speed bumps at all in along West Street to you know, slow down traffic along there. Is that something that would be part of this grant? Yeah. <laughs> people, it's, it's usually, uh, people like that, but it's not feasible. Mm -hmm. There are ways we can reduce speed. So today, speed, speed bump is not, uh, it's not feasible. There was, a time it was feasible, uh, but study shows that uh, it also creates some problems. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. So Chris, when you say that there are other, other ways, whatever those other ways are, and you don't need to articulate them, but would those be considered so that as this project's going on, if there is any way to mitigate the propensity for people to speed? Yes. In the past, the past couple times we uh, maintained West Street, it was just stone and oil, and that was a pretty, pretty good to turn rather than paving it. So, mm -hmm. you know, it kept them a little bit slower than making a major highway out of it. Take it to dirt, really set it back. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I, think what, I think with yeah. speed bumps, uh, you, you don't have any uh, tire prints on a common now, but wherever you put those speed bumps, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be a dirt track on a common. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's true. Ask. Mm -hmm. So, do we want to make a motion for? road improvements on the common or yeah. something along those lines we'll make, to, so that we could submit this grant on Friday. Make a motion to approve uh, the DPW or David to submit the MassWorks grant application for West Street road improvements. Second. Okay, any further discussion? If uh, we are favored by a grant and you don't like it, uh, you don't have to accept it. So yeah. mm -hmm. this is just permission to apply. Mm -hmm. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> oh, abstain. We've got a, oh, we'll wait on that. Yeah. More people from the municipal building? Just the two of you guys? No, that's fine. Would you guys want to, are you prepared or do you want a few more minutes? Okay. okay. So I quickly put this together just to give an overview of some of the projects that we've all been discussing and certainly the biggest one that is on everybody's mind is Russell School <laughs> and what to do with it and everything else that's Thank you. associated with that. So um, our hope was that we were going to have a paper for you guys to give you the overall cost and everything. 
I apologize with um, some family commitments. I was pulled away, so I couldn't do it. Uh, so we, I've listed a few things, just to give you an idea where what we're actually working on right now and what's a priority. And the first one is public safety. Uh, the, there's, as you are aware, there was a lot of critical issues with uh, venting of the attic. We actually got up in there and came up with a really great idea of modifying it and simplifying it and, and uh, uh, reducing the cost. And everybody was up there between the architect. Uh, Gary Berg is actually the one that thought about it. And it worked. it's going to work out much better. We think it's going to be much more efficient. So it did um, skew the uh, scheduling a little bit. But we're still on track to do that very quickly. That's that first item. Uh, so th that's going well. The second is certainly is the renovation of uh, Russell School and the pricing. So again, I apologize, but we're going to give you an overview of what those costs were. Uh, we, we have the architect that's on, um, that we have to uh, help us on these projects, and he came up with a really good breakdown. The, the cost is excessive. We're looking at probably 20 to $22 million to fix that building, to be able to utilize it. The issue with the building is that it would give, it, after it's fixed, it only gives us a very small use of that building, and it's based on code issues and the what we call seismic problems associated with it. Seismic is earthquake. That building being uh, brick, without any type of rebar metal in it. it if it shakes, it falls down. Uh, so in order to use it, you can only use it for specific purposes that, don't, that would not trigger getting into the seismic issue. If we got into seismic, we're looking at doubling or tripling that cost up to probably $50 million. And of course, that's just, gets to the point that you go, even though it's a great, beautiful building, what do you do with it? So what we're going to ask of you is what we've all been talking about is probably putting uh, some type of vote to this out for the residents to vote on what we should do with the building. Should we keep it? It is a beautiful building. It is right into the center of town. It's a very valuable piece of property for the town. But it would be very expensive to keep that building, renovate it, and use it. And the question then is, what do we use it for with what we're doing right now? So I think we need to entertain probably some type of a, a non-binding uh, vote to the uh, residents and have to give them an idea what, what can be done what we're faced with and if they don't want to spend the 22 million do we sell it but do we sell it in such a way and we've talked about this uh, is there a possibility of of some type of mutual partnership that we still own the building to some extent but allow like we did with um, the Pioneer Valley school so they they do all the renovations but we leasehold improvements for 22 million <laughs> <laughs> i mean but you have to remember when somebody privatizes or does it it's not going to cost them 22 million yes mm -hmm. it's going to cost them a the third of that wage. correct, correct. Yeah. yeah so that's the big difference that's the big difference. we as a town cannot afford it right now under prevailing i would wages. be on a rampage again like the north hadley hall you know <laughs> This time it would be a uh, ball and chain over there. So how many square feet is that roughly, that building? Do you have any idea? Maybe ballpark. Uh, 6,000 square yeah, feet. Yeah, something around that. 6,000 big three levels. Yeah. You got two classrooms on each floor. Yeah. I mean, have we looked at tearing it down and building well, something in its place that's similar? I mean, I mean you, could, you could easily, I mean, you built the senior center for what, seven yeah. million? And that's 10,000 square feet? So, yeah, one floor. Yeah, one floor, but still, I mean. Mm -hmm. Or do you want to sell the building with 
with historical restrictions on keeping the facade of the uh, Russell Street School as it is and letting them use it as they deem necessary. I can just imagine um, the tax impact of a $22 million project and the, the hollering we got about the senior center of the library, even though... We would all be going to our grave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's all fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, there, there also are options with CPA, possibly. Oh, which no. Which we no, haven't worked no. completely, yeah, which so we could investigate more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to, <laughs> yeah. no, talk to CPA, and he no. uh, was talking about matching grant from historic preservation and turning it into the town hall. And it is possible. And it I is think, possible. And I think your numbers are a little high. Oh, no. Well, a long, long, long time ago, in a land far away, they were 12 million. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now we're at 22. I don't think those figures are that far off. I mean, he spent a lot of time going through with professionals in that building, we did some destructive testing to see what was in the walls. Uh, I, I personally don't feel, based on what's out there going up now, that I mean, those even even David Tudor, he renovates old buildings yes. all the time. And he said, exactly. I mean, this is his job, his life. You know that mm -hmm. he knows what these old buildings are. So nobody can better tell us exactly how much it would cost to make that handicap accessible, all rewiring, all plumbing. The whole nine yards, it's sinking on one side, and it's been sinking. That's why we moved elementary out of there. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of things going on with that building that and then we, we can't address as a town. Right. And then we talked about possibly using some CPA right now to minimize the um, destruction that's actually happening with, with some of the Stairs. So given the um, sensitivity of this particular building, and I, and I think it is more sensitive than anything mm -hmm. because it's our town center, mm -hmm. um, before we go to just sort of a referendum type of thing, would it be worth having a committee formed targeting people oh. with, hey, oh. I know. You go with another <laughs> committee. <laughs> Holy mother of mercy. <laughs> a committee that Joyce does not <laughs> have to be in. Um, but I I'm just thinking. Their meeting. But what I, I think there. the municipal <laughs> building committee can take it so far, right? But then what about people on the private sector who might come in to give us a better sense of is that a viable option, right? What you know, what if we put it out there and I'm I'm thinking, you know, the Barry Roberts types people of the world or Berkshire Design or somebody else that could come in. I'm just worried about throwing a jump ball up at you know. And they say, oh, tear it down, and people are speculating, and you've got 150 opinions unencumbered with any facts whatsoever. You know, how, how could we bring more information to the people of the town so they can make a, a really good decision about this? And we should spend some time figuring out what the options are with regard to partnerships or whatever, ways that yeah. can be. We need some professional help and guidance to figure out, is there ways that mm -hmm. A municipality can work with somebody and get around these crazy, insane. Maybe prices. we could talk to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and just ask them how do how do we go about this? How do we get that skill set? And then if it does require money, then maybe we go to CPA and ask them to help out with that because they've done that kind of thing before. I, I just hate to just throw it up with no information. Yeah, I hate, hate to have the options to be we tear it down or we sell it or. We fix we it. Like, what else? You know, well, are there more options? Because I feel like that's a really historic part of town. We want to preserve it as town property, town hall, something. And I'd hate to lose that, you know, piece of land as part of town. Personally, we'll get but, rid of North Hadley Hall. Yeah, and this is these are the last three historic corners you have in Hadley. Yeah, mm -hmm. right here, right now. Mm -hmm. Right. You got it, and, and I am so. not particularly out. Absolutely not. It's the only history you got left in town. Yeah. So I heard Molly comment, make a comment about take it down and rebuild it to look the same. How does that go in terms of feasibility? Well, the unfortunate problem in New England, any time that you're getting into uh, bricks, uh, the the price is astronomical for us. Uh, so 
how do you mimic the building it would be in some type of a brick facade uh, which is costly for any municipality to do but certainly over time it's the best uh, material for longevity if you mouse did that with uh, the West Experiment Station, um, took it down, rebuilt it, new brick, not not everything old, and uh, you know it, you can tell it's new, but it looks the same, so it looks pretty good. Um, I don't know what the cost was, but yeah. they've done it. But that'd be great to have those options in front of people. Yeah. You know, $22 million price tag, $11 million price tag with loss of ownership and control, you know, whatever the, those are. And I think along those lines of possibly rebuilding, if we decided we didn't want to spend the $22 million, we wanted to spend, say, $100,000 now to knock the building down, leave it in green space for a few years until we decide that we need to move town hall across the street and build something new and kind of stretch the, the, the cost out over five, ten years or something along those lines, and then we could build something that looks exactly the same, kind of preserve that land at the town center so we're not selling off our town center. Um, but then, you know, the taxpayers aren't getting hit with a $22 million price tag right after they got hit with $13 million. You, you, won't, you won't get it. No, but, but I think, I think it's good what municipal building's doing now is we're, they're teeing it up. Right. They're saying, I'm not hearing anybody suggest that we make a decision this year no. and no. go out to, no. but this, this is, this we is need to set the wheels in motion. Yeah. 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 So is there anything on special town meeting warrant that's going to require a ballot vote afterwards at this point? Probably. Oh, yeah, the answer is right down a <laughs> note, but uh, there probably will be. So can, can we get put on that? Get a committee together so that way they can do some work and hopefully have something ready for that mm -hmm. election? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, some scenarios, that's all we need is to right. have, yeah. you know, choices. Yeah. What we do need is um, to fund the, the line item for the architect. We're down to only a couple thousand dollars, I think, aren't we, David? Uh, I I, think we're getting low on it. I think we have another $25,000 article, don't we? That we can access after July 1st, which is already. Oh, done. okay. Great. So, but I'll, I'll check in with him tomorrow. Because yeah. um, we're going to need his help on going, giving us some scenarios. So yeah, you, you might check out the town of Princeton. They have a building that very similar to this that they renovated completely with using CPA money. You might check in and see how we did it. I well, really like to look at the out on CPA. Yeah. That's the our, our biggest problem is getting them to even somewhat cooperate. But you can borrow CPA. against CPA money. Too. They they would be willing the couple but you're not going to couple of them that I talked million. to said they would be interested yeah. in a project like this if we could get a, a grant a matching grant from historical preservation or or some other means of funding you know half of it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's possible. Every every other city and town throughout the country are are doing it on their historical buildings. Yeah. I think well, the nobody's nobody's looking into that. I, you know. Well, and I think the reason nobody's looking into it is because again we're running with part time volunteers who are trying to get this we stuff done in their spare time. So, so if we if could find some people yeah. to help municipal building, then maybe that legwork could be done. Whether it's PVPC or, you know. Yeah. They seem you know, like a logical go-to. I mean, yeah. Springfield just did it with, with a couple of their historical buildings. Mm -hmm. That and was all, all matching Molly's funds. point is what the problem is. We're, everybody here in this town is pretty well saturated with, and one we're of the things I couldn't and even really report time. because of what's going on down <laughs> here. Springfield has full-time people to deal with all this stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. And they have the them. Yeah, as we does don't. Ham, as does Northampton, as does Hampshire yeah. County. And we don't have doing the, the, people, doing the, uh, the manpower anymore. The, uh, because we're all doing our own jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, the courthouse over there, that's all being renovated mm -hmm. and redone. And it's the same type of structure as what's sitting over there on the corner. Mm -hmm. It's not that type mm -hmm. of stone and brick over there. Same thing. So, so I'd uh, like to make a motion that we authorize the Municipal Building Committee to act there. Pleasure reach out to Pioneer Valley Planning Commission um, and determine what resources they need to get the information that we're talking about in advance of a potential um, ballot referendum after the, the you know, uh, fall town meeting. 
can make a friendly amendment. Sure. Uh, also authorize a committee to be formed of uh, interested residents that can brainstorm some ideas as well at mm -hmm. the same time. Mm -hmm. That would be a separate committee then to mm -hmm. the building committee. Right. Yeah, we work with them. Right. Sub so we sub of the sub building committee. Yeah. Are, are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Or just any, any or help just we can get is interested great to, to contact us or the building committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think there are a lot of facets it's like financing of yeah. it, you know, yeah. CPA grants, mm -hmm. and then there's design options too. What could mm -hmm. we possibly do at that site or that building? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But realistically, we need to get a committee formed. Or, or we need to get a committee appointed probably our next September, meeting yeah. in order to let them meet a few times before uh, you know election time so that mm -hmm. we can get on the ballot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Just to put a B in everybody's bonnet, if you um, borrow against CPA, there's no impact on taxes. Mm -hmm. Well, that covers three million. You can, you can leverage, you can leverage the three million more. Yeah, much more, yes. Gotcha. But we're also talking about reducing our CPA from 3% to 2%. No, I'm, I'm talking about reducing it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I have a lot of options. And I'm just saying what we've talked about. So yeah, yeah, there's a little bit of information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Change so the there. third item on that is um, we want to look into using uh, some CPA funds to try to uh, stabilize the exterior facade, especially on the west side. Um, uh, and we're going to look into that and go back to you. Mm -hmm. I, I hope we have your support to be able to use CPAs for that. Mm -hmm. Well, then you need to set something up and go to CPA committee when their next meeting before town meeting. It's just Time. I know. Their due date was August 9th, yes, I think. Yeah, the due exactly. date's coming right yeah. up. Coming up. Oh, that's Friday. Sorry. Yeah, that's Friday. <laughs> yeah. Just, who can do that? Yeah. Because yeah. That's, that's they I, always want uh, everything yeah. written in stone, what you're going to do well, with the money. Maybe we've given the... Uh, How about a place card? card? Maybe we can get them to schedule another meeting in September. Yeah, placeholder for... Placeholder. Like we do placeholders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you do a placeholder with them, just something in writing saying we are looking to do, need some money to do the facade of the Russell School, can you meet again in September mm -hmm. before town meeting so that we can have something put together? We'll do that. Uh, the painting, and the next one item is the painting of the, uh, the, the town hall pillars, uh, the architect assured me that he's going to get those specs immediately. I've talked to David. We want to go out to bid on that right away and get that going. Uh, and the next the next item is the new parking lot. I've talked to, uh, I did talk to Mark Darnold at Berkshire Design, and he is guaranteeing the price that he had, it was a 16000 plus or minus, depending on what you want to uh, do. If you, we have to go to Z, uh, ZBA or not. I don't think we really have to go to the ZBA, but we, we do have to go to planning board, so we could use that services for that. So it's looking at like 16000 um, for the design work. And we, we need had, your authorization on that. Yeah, we had the estimate for the design work. Was there an estimate, just a ballpark project price for something like that? And for some reason, there was, uh, when, before DPW, uh, I, I think the price tag was 250 to 280 to put it in. And there was some questions in regards to the what was needed for drainage. There was back some back and forth discussion on that, but that's I think what we're probably looking at for. Could, price. could Chris help? And Chris has been. Yeah. yeah. So and can we do something with free cash? Or are we going to have enough free cash to do a project like that on this more for the design? The, the design. Can we get the design at least going so we can give it, uh, hand it over to Chris and yeah. you know, start getting some prices? I was just going to say about constructing it, project. if we're yes, using I that area, I saw them setting up construction plan. fence over there. Are we going to, when would we be able to put in this parking lot? Is it going to be two two years? The senior center and the library will be built. So you won't yeah. even be able to utilize it. It prob yeah. probably won't be until they're done with constructing the library, correct? Well, that's totally to up to you guys. I think it could be started next next season if you wanted it. Next se next year. Yeah, because yeah, the the, the, the senior the, center and parking lot will be done in April, theoretically. So 
they could move some of their staging over there. They're looking to pay the senior center, I believe, in fall time. Yeah, in November. Is By November 28th. November, yeah. Before November 28th, when yeah. the asphalt plant closed. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This year. This year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we, I guess we could. So I don't have a beat on free cash at this time, so I'll be getting those numbers. Um, so the, the answer is it's possible. So let's can we add a placeholder on the warrant at least for the sixteen thousand, and then um, if we have to pull it because free cash is not available, we can do that. Sixteen thousand for design. Mm -hmm. Is that all we need to get it done? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it on your capital request form? Is that your capital request? That, that guy? Yeah, that's a draft that we put put together. David, um, okay, do we need to vote on that, or are you okay just doing that? I'm just going to take it as instruction. We'll take the formal votes when we have all the capital okay. articles together. And if we don't have the money, then we don't have the money. Address it at time. Yeah. Unless you put that on top of the list of capital. Uh, six is the. Um, well, Goodwin Memorial Library, the, the original, the existing one, uh, we're postponing uh, for the actual work and whatnot. And then the West Street Commons, uh, the only thing that we might be working with everybody on, with Chris and all, would be the gazebo if, if we want to go forward with that. Mm -hmm. So whenever we can always resurrect that, I still have all the information from we, what we compiled before. So. If the thought is to go forward with that, we can get that going pretty quickly. <coughs> Any other somebody questions? Somebody still needs to talk to historic preservation on that common. If we can even build anything out there, really. I couldn't hear you, John. I'm sorry. Uh, talk to historic about building something on a common. We need to make sure being that it, somebody being brought it up, they preserved that the way sure it is. We could, but we think we can. We should. Why not? It should. It, we should we, we want to use it, utilize it for future use. And mm -hmm. what we had uh, for the last few weeks was fantastic. A lot of people like that. And I yeah. think we should try to go forward with something that mm -hmm. we have to have a central building to work mm -hmm. off of. I think yeah, I don't think he was perfect. throwing up an obstacle. I think he was just saying, make sure yeah, that's yeah. on the checklist. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the last time, there, uh, there's not many people on that anymore, but the last time I checked, they, that was up to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they didn't have any problems. They didn't really have stuff too, too much. Yeah. 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 We're all set. Any other questions? Oh, sure. Yeah, we can do that. Mm -hmm. And. So we're all set with municipal building? Yeah. Yeah, that was going to do that. Yeah. All right, Applebee's. Is anybody here for Applebee's? Besides, yeah. All right, you're all set. I actually, I like it. You want to be on a committee? Maybe something. Okay, let's do the poll hearing since I think uh, some people are here from Eversource. So uh oh, my computer went to sleep during that. <laughs> that and I don't have the content, but are, is someone here from Eversource for the poll hearing? Yeah, go for it. Where, where are we putting, where are you requesting for a poll? Good evening. So this isn't actually for a poll. Oh, okay. But it is for equipment in the town taking. Um, this is for a um, new pad mount transformer um, on Ventura Way. There is a new kind of commercial thing, office building going up in there and um, to power them up there's an underground loop that goes around that hole up and turn away. So in order to give that power, we need to cut into the existing feed underground, splice fit, and then place a new transformer, and that's how we're going to power them up. And it's on Town Road. Yeah, it's um, it's back there. Yeah. yeah, it's in the you know in the town taking. So I think it's 23 feet off of the center line of the turn away. It's just up from the pump station. And that's good for been approved by the DPW director of that location. I'm just thinking like snow plowing or anything along those lines. It's underground. How far? Oh, it's how far? Yeah. Okay. How far off the road are you put in the box? Same as the other ones? Uh, 23 feet from the center line of the road. From the center line. Yeah, it's in our best interest to make these, you know, so they don't get hit by cars and so um, snow plows don't 
you know, first known to them. So we take the precaution to design these. So it's also with, where we all teach our kids how to drive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think when I uh, I went to Steve Lewis and test drove a car, and I think they <laughs> took me there too. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, all set. Thank right, you. Thanks, folks. Until next time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, we had a 7 o'clock public hearing for sewer rates. Anybody? Again. Again. Well, we had a change here. This is uh, some uh, changes. I, I don't know if Christopher or anyone wants to describe it, but basically we are just proposing here to change the commercial sewer conservation uh, rate from $6.67 to $7.34 per 100 cubic feet. Um, it's a 10% increase in those rates and that only affects the largest commercial customers on our sewer system. Um, so this would be, for example, hotels, um, uh, nursing homes, those kind of things would have no impact to residential rates or the baseline commercial rates. Thank you guys. I don't know if I'm, somebody wants to say any more or... I'll make, I'll make a motion to accept it. Oh, quick. I have a comment. Oh, yes, <laughs> go. go. I'm sure. yeah. so, of course he does. I'm surprised if he didn't. Yeah. Um, why is it 10%? And why are hotels also affected that already pay an occupancy tax and we also pay a large sewer impact fee when we do construct. Mm -hmm. I feel like, in our opinion, and anyone else who does new construction who has, for example, um, like us, is getting double taxed here. Or more. Mm -hmm. Or more. And it's quite, quite unfair. The impact fees are very just enough, which does help the department out. But yeah, this is just tax on top of tax on top of tax. Yeah. My only comment is I think we're putting the cart before the horse here. We've got some things on the uh, warrant to fix the situation of the enterprise funds. And like I said previously, once we get to that point where we know where we stand with those changes or those fixes to the enterprise funds, if we have to increase rates, I think it should, you know, be taken up at that time. I don't think just throwing rate increases here and there is going to fix the problem that we have long term. So I thought um, that what we were going to do tonight um, was definitely open the hearing back up, but I thought that we were going to hear from Chris um, and Sue more about this and not, not just have a number, because I, I don't know where the 10% came from either. Um, but I, I know that we had talked about doing this in terms of, of looking, um, Keisha, at just one band, like uh, the commercial to see whether or not we needed to do both residential and commercial or whether we could just increase commercial, but it, it should be fit in the context of a financial plan. And I understand that, and I understand. Because otherwise we can't even answer your question. No, but I understand, and I'll, give you the fact that the DPW does need a lot, for example, an office, um, as a town resident, <laughs> too, and a, t and a local sure. business owner. I understand what they're making do of what they have. I appreciate that. In terms of the business aspect, that's my point. I feel like we're being double taxed and targeted here in this aspect. When there are other commercial buildings and businesses that use more water than a normal residential dwell, mm -hmm. other than just hotels and nursing homes. Yeah, I, I was actually hoping that we would be able to, so where we last left off was when we, uh, when we met to talk about the proposed increase for sewer, um, we were looking at an across the board increase, and that goes back to what David Phil just said, it's like, wait a minute, you know, 
how to, how to even explain this to everybody. Um, at the time, everybody who had the information wasn't in the room. And we found out after the fact that no, we didn't have to do an across the board increase. So that opened up this conversation to other possibilities. Uh, and, and I was hoping that um, we could spend a little bit of time talking tonight from an educational standpoint. We've got some new board members too. How does this actually work? Historically, what have we done? What is the amount of money we're actually, what's the problem we're trying to solve? Um, and then we could have a more intelligent discussion about does it make sense to just do the 7,500 plus and just hit the hotels and the nursing homes or do we do all of commercial? Do we do them differentially? I, I mean, I just don't have any of that information. So I think in general, we're, we're looking at two different kinds of problems that we're trying to uh, not solve, but partially address through this proposal. Uh, the first is, is that you have a solvency issue with the sewer enterprise fund. You just don't have enough money coming in um, to cover your expenses. Um, the other is the plant capacity issue. Okay, so we're crowding or perhaps even above the 80% the capacity. Um, of the plant, um, but, um, so we have to encourage people to um, reduce their consumption of water, which translates into their outpour of sewer. Um, and so whenever you have a tiered system, that is built into um, the that trying to address that problem, that if you have people that use a little bit of water, a little bit of sewer, then they get charged a rate which is below the rate charged by people who uh, use a lot of water and generate a lot of sewer because both, because um, you're trying to conf uh, encourage that conservation. If they can reduce the amount of water that they enjoy the uh, lower rate, if they can't do that, then they have to pay the higher rate to cover our costs of maintaining both the water treatment plant and the sewer treatment plant. plant uh, so that's one issue. The other issue is, is that this proposal here is estimated to generate about $44,000 per year, which doesn't address all of your financial issues with the sewer enterprise fund, but it, uh, it helps. It um, demonstrates to the world that you're looking at this and taking the problem seriously and that you're willing to take some steps in order to um, um, generate revenue for uh, an enterprise fund which is struggling just to keep up with its operations. Yeah, and, and I get all of that, but I mean, in order to, for the board to make a, an intelligent decision on do we increase sewer rates now, yes or no? If we increase sewer rates, whose rates do we increase? And then three, by how much? And so I'm looking at commercial and residential. I mean, how, how much of the, so you're talking about the plant, right? So, I mean, I think there needs to be some logic behind it. So if we're running into capacity issues, sitting here, I have no idea who the, how much of the plant is, residential, how much is baseline sewer, and how much is exacerbated by the bigger sewer <coughs> users? Like, what, what are, what's the usage percentage? <laughs> there are 66. The lady in the well. <laughs> yeah, there are 66 um, sewer accounts that go into, um, go into the conservation rate. That's all. And they, um, and the sewer plant, um, treats approximately 2.3 million cubic feet um, of, of sewage from those 66 accounts. Mm -hmm. That's almost as much as is treated for the whole rest of the town. So it is, I mean, the impact from these accounts um, is, is driving capacity. Okay. So, so I mean that that's, that's where good I came. information yeah. to, to have, and it's a a I mean, piece of the, the usage, data that we, we took the usage fees from the commercial yeah. buildings. Yeah. 
quick question. Yeah. Are apartment complexes included in those, or are they separate? Yeah, we don't. Okay. We don't have apartments. Green leaves. Green leaves. Yeah. Should do. Oh, that's right. I keep the, I keep the green, condos. Green yeah. leaves doesn't affect the town of Hadley sewer. No, green leaves is but used in town of Hadley water, water, and it's right. going to Amherst sewer. Right. So, how of those 66 customers that mm -hmm. are in the highest rate there, how close are they? You know, how far over that 75, that 100 cubic foot threshold are they? Are they way over? Are they close? What a lot are, of them are. Okay, because I mean, some are close. Okay. So, but, is that this other piece of um, we have a schedule here that shows access fee FY 18 to 2020 rates. Those are the rate fees. Yeah, those are rates. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no. Go. Ahead. Okay. I don't know if we have what you were talking about. No, I just did this the other day. But um, so you know, you've got restaurants who are typically higher usage. Um, um, Country Nissan. You've got Big Y, the car washes, those are the hotels, um, and then you have small stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, No free car washes at the hotels. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> the, nursing home? the nursing home, I think, is one of our largest. Yeah, I, imagine. I would imagine. Would Genesis, yeah. 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 The residents there. Um, and, and the reason I'm asking is because as part of a big picture rate increase or rate change, if our goal is to encourage people to conserve water and save on capacity, then, and I don't know what the state laws are as far as water rates, so this is for, for you guys as well, but yeah. would it not make sense to maybe break down the rate structure so that way someone's encouraged to drop down to that next tier if they install water saving appliances, things like that, and then you know, if someone really does have to stay in the highest tier, then maybe you do need to increase on them. But then at the same time, if you have some encouragement to save some water and to... You know. But then keep bear in mind, when we when save you, water, then people aren't paying. When you build... Exactly. Water, right. yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of a double edge. <laughs> yeah. I got a question. When you built the motel, there was incentives to put as much low flow everything in as possible, wasn't there? For the yeah. most part? For the most part, we try to. Yeah. Um, you know, it's more on the electrical side that they try to make you conserve. But yeah. yeah, we try to do the most efficient. Um, yeah, that's your profitability there. Yeah. Every city, yeah. So, right. And, but my other question is the sewer impact fee that we paid for two developments. What does that go? I thought that was supposed to go to this capacity issue. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of it does. A lot of it goes towards capital, really, in in, in the wastewater. Out of well, that, that capital is supposed to be addressed in your capacity yeah. issues. Uh, see, uh, Jesus, back 94 maybe, I think, we had a specific impact fee for the commercial area, pump station two, and the way they had wrote it, I'd like to get a copy, if, if anybody can get a copy of that, oh, I might have it, we might have it, and bring it in and show you how we wrote that. That was uh, when they proposed this impact fee, that was before the impact fee and, and the X amount of dollars per gallon pumped at that pump station went towards replacing the pump stations, you know, to upgrade that area for, mm -hmm. for the commercial, anything that went through there. But since that, uh, we've upgraded two more, two more pump stations have been added commercially, but one pump station has been added residentially going through that station now to, for the act for protection uh, up around Holly Road and Mount Warner and that area. Mm -hmm. And there was so a, there was on a this, second stage. Do we have any motions or do we have anything we want to push forward on this? Any action items? Well, I feel like we've gone around, but go, go ahead if we want to um, keep going. From a competitive, uh, not competitive, but. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> From a market rate standpoint, um, how do these rates compare with neighboring communities? We're low. Northampton, uh, their residential and commercial rate is uh, 788 per 100 cubic foot. Um, Southampton, uh, sorry, Westfield, 
was, um, I think, eight. I mean, we're low. And, you know, I did some calculations a couple of years ago, and I figured in order to meet our operating expenses for sewer, we would have had to increase the rates 43% because we didn't increase rates since 2007. I mean, you know, and you're still, you still have the expenses. Uh, you're negotiating union contracts, you're, you've got fuel costs, you've got, um, you know, transport costs, you, but the rates stay the same. And you know, we we're don't treating, hold. we're treating a half a million gallons here. North Ham is treating how many million gallons? Yeah, but it's kind of a per capita thing because it's still per hundred cubic feet. So that's the equalizer. Yeah. So, um, and from a timing standpoint, I think when I did stop to see you, if if we didn't vote for any change tonight, um, that next billing cycle that would be affected isn't even until what February? February, right? Yep. So, so if we were to vote any sort of change tonight, it would show up in the February bill. Exactly. So that's just one, one quarter. Yes, exactly. Yeah, two quarters of next year, right? Yeah. Um, so it would affect half a year's revenue. So the 44 isn't really 44,000, it's actually 22,000. Right. Um, and then you would get full effect of it for a year later. Yeah. So, all right, I'm gonna make a motion. <laughs> um, in the midst of abject frustration that we can't seem to, to get a plan with, with numbers and having people have fully communicated before we're sitting here. And I'm going to respectfully ask the board to um, do something. And I'm going to propose a 5% increase and just cut this in half uh, on the largest tier. And I really want to try to keep this conversation going and try to come up with a fully vetted plan, but just try to do something. I'll second. <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah, yeah, I just want to say too, I know we have these other plans in the pipeline to go to town meeting and come up with some other options. However, those are all have to go through town meeting and get approved. And so if those fail, we could be looking at having to increase the rates even higher than what we're looking at right now. And to me, doing some incremental rate increase, especially if it's keeping within market rates, um, that's, that's probably a good idea. And, you know, personally, I, I think I qualify for that rate for my business. So I am bringing this up on myself. So, um, you know, but looking at the numbers for the town, uh, we need to do something. Yeah, I don't think there's any argument that a rate increase is going to be required. The question is how much and who's going to bear the cost of that increase. Mm -hmm. And we can't figure that out until we know what makes it through town meeting and where we stand and, and exactly what we're going to do about the big picture here. Um, if we give a, a rate increase to the highest commercial customers, um, you know, that's, I guess, a step towards raising some money, but that doesn't solve the, the, the problem. There's no way that $40,000 comes even close to solving the problem. No. So we're going to be right back at this. And, and the reason why I'm saying wait till after town meeting is because then if I have if I have to take phone calls from people and say hey it, why are you raising my rates again I say hey we tried to fix it at town meeting we tried to do the best we could you guys turned it down this is where we're at we have no choice we got to raise it 15 20 percent whatever it has to be raised I know, but I know 11,000 sounds like a drop in the bucket but again it's just something and then if we have to institute some you know asking people not to water their lawns and all of that stuff in the meantime in advance of town meeting you know, but it gives, it gives our DCW director time. You're though. compounding the problem that way. They're not using the water, and the water in the first place isn't even going into the sewer. Yeah, but the no, operation right. costs really, are still yeah. the operation costs. Yeah. So we want them to water their lawns more, actually. Wash your car and water your Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, any further discussion on that? I'm kind of in favor of waiting until 
town meeting too because like David said we had put some things in place and certainly um, looking at this meeting right after town meeting when we get our votes in I think would be uh, more beneficial and then we can institute it then at that time. And then we're potentially going to be going back to Keyshore and asking for a 10, 15, or 20 percent increase. And I don't well, think they're going to be very happy. That is true. That, <laughs> that very well could happen <laughs> if nothing passes town meeting. We I mean, I agreed that. with the five percent water when I did that, and the, mm -hmm. and the five percent now that I'm that you're asking, I I can kind of go along with that also, but. You know, Can you kind of go along with it just a little bit more? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's 66 businesses, and, and again, I'm not trying, but, but the hotels, I mean, ultimately it gets passed on to the consumers. I mean, That's true. it will be. It will. It's just from a development span, standpoint, it's just we pay the sewer impact fee to help, and we understand, we might not agree with it, but we understand it, mm -hmm. to mitigate this. At the same time, as a resident, I understand, and as a business owner, cost increases are high. Mm -hmm. And reiterating what David said, this is this seems like a small band-aid across something that needs a bigger fix to it. And I feel like, again, we are being targeted for this only. And, um, no one likes to raise taxes. I, as a resident, I mean, of course, I don't want them raised either. But again, it's just we paid it once. It seems like we're paying it again, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. It, you know, in a town meeting, the way I've been bringing it forward here is if we went according to the water and according to the sewer needs, and we went for capital expenditures and raised the taxes that way, and I'm looking at putting it in the ground and having it there for another 50 or 60 years. We, we know that's going to be there. And that'll take some of the burden off the trucks, you know, equipment, pumps, that kind of thing should be taken out of capital. That, and it should come through taxation, not through the user's fees, you know. And I know a lot of people do disagree with that, but the, the waters run that same way. And the water, the water's offsetting some of the budget also right now. We also okay. have uh, union contracts and people to pay, <coughs> you know, and we have obligated ourselves to, I'm just talking operating, I'm not talking capital, we've obligated ourselves to increases. So we don't want to put ourselves in a situation where Chris finds himself having to really take a very serious look at uh, staffing needs as well and that's what I'm worried about because that's just pure operating ultimately it comes down to people so just a small you know eleven thousand dollars is a part of a person that's all I'm saying and I think we're you know projecting this year to be in that ballpark negative on the the budget for sewer I thought this year we were kind of 20,000. 20,000 surplus. This year, but then next year we're looking at diving <laughs> below that zero. That was 128,000 yeah. in the red for next year. Next year. Right? I thought it was yes. just like 30 or 40,000. I don't know. So but anyway. I, I we want to say, so yeah. for everyone that's listening at home when you call me, <laughs> <laughs> that if this does not, that our fixes do not make it through town meeting in the fall, everybody's going to see a rate increase, not just the commercial customers, because right. the commercial customers can't bear it at all. There's way too much money to be raised here. So mm -hmm. we need to do this from multiple angles, and there's no way to avoid rate increases for everybody. I mean, there's no way to avoid it. Yep. It's going to have to happen. The question is how much and who and when. And when. Yes. All right. All those in favor? Oh, oh wait. Alan, you want to say one more thing? Closing comment? Are we still talking about a public hearing here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The sewer. So uh, it's not so much on that motion, but on... The talk I hear about, well, we will be going to bring something forward to town hall, to town meeting. There's multiple possible fixes. I, I've only heard one possible fix. I'm wondering what other ones you you are considering. For instance, <coughs> whether the, whether the idea of putting this, spreading it out wider on the taxes, just like the water is sort of, was everybody uses water, not everybody uses sewer. But still, the idea of spreading out this. The, the cost of the sewage treatment plant and related things. We talked about it at our, at our yeah. last meeting. That yeah, is that going to be one of the things that maybe we're, we're, looking, at, we're, looking, at taking, that we're looking at taking 2% of 
one percent away from CPA. That's that's what I've heard. Yeah, that's, that's, one. that's the only thing I've heard. That, that's one. And yeah. then and also stabilization paying stabilization potentially. Yeah, taking from stabilization to pay some of the or to to replenish the enterprise fund. Yeah. And then John's also, idea about the capital. Well, yeah. yeah. And then 100 and paying the the debt service uh, of 128,000 is that what it is yeah. on the pumping station debt as mm -hmm. well. So to kind of take that pressure off yeah. the enterprise fund, so that way the 128 can. You need to be careful with that, and I did say today that you're going to need to check with DOR's um, council right. because. That could very well come back to bite us. It hit us in the free cash if it's not done the right way. And I did some checking on that because that was already built. <coughs> it's already going, budget, fo so. going forward after town meeting, if, if it gets approved in capital, then we can go forward with taking it out of taxation. But I don't know if we can take those two pump stations that are built and put them in taxation. Okay. We could take on new sewer debt. New sewer debt. To the tax rate, but not old yeah. Yeah. equipment that has to be purchased. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. You to be very careful how you do that. Yeah. yeah. We don't get to hit on the other yeah. side. So I will rephrase that. We're looking at ways to leave <laughs> yeah. the debt. So it's <laughs> legally. Yeah. Yes, legally. My one thought is that. I mean, it's possible, but we need to go about it the proper yeah. way. Right. Okay. I, I just want to point out that from my point of view, I'm not on the sewer. But I would happily pay for the keep that sewage treatment plant up and running because it does benefit the whole town in two ways. It keeps the river clean. Yeah. Okay, we all benefit from that. And it makes development possible where you wouldn't otherwise have it. And that benefits the town yes. with the tax rate. So this is, this is what I've been trying to do. Can you come in and stay in my office? Thank you. care about the taxes, but I mean if it's for a legitimate yes. purpose. And it's spread out <laughs> enough. Yes. Well, I mean, and it, as long as our tax rate still stays the lowest in the county. Yes. Yeah. All right. We got so one guy just on water. That's a little bit understandable here. We we got to that that time. Time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. No. No. Are you voting? Are you voting, Chuck? I guess I am. No. <laughs> no. Not at this time. Okay. After fall town meeting, we can I'll look at it. Fall okay. Meeting. Address it again, and hopefully we have enough options on the table, and it gets voted through where we can. Hopefully, stabilize. I love it when we managed to hopefully. <laughs> no, I, I fingers crossed. We have a lot of hoping. We, <laughs> yeah. we need to sell it. I mean, I've had a lot of calls on it already, and like yeah. I said, from the the people that are just on water, and and they, of our teeth. some of them don't want to offset the sewer, but they just don't realize. That the malls, the amount of taxes and water and sewer that, that the malls pay or the commercial area pays, it is offsetting our tax rate big time for the residents. Okay. Down the wire here. Go yeah. ahead. Okay, so let's do the. Uh, we are asked to open the search for a human resources director. Uh, we started a committee the two meetings ago. Uh, I think. David and Joyce, you guys were on that committee. Make a motion to approve opening the search, advertising the search. We were hoping that if we got the approval tonight, we could get this in the Gazette for this weekend because we can submit it tomorrow morning. And we have a pay scale with this? We have a uh, pay of uh, budget of $70,000 available. No, but we have a pay scale. We just went through this whole process of yeah. job grade and everything, so shouldn't we be putting that range in? I don't, I don't typically put that into the job, job notice. That's something that we you don't put any amount in there? I, I typically don't do that. Okay. It's up to the pleasure of the board. Well, so what happens we when to. somebody wants to apply and they call and they say, how much is it pay? Put a, we should put a minimum in, and then depends on qualifications. We usually put a band. I mean, that's yeah. kind of the whole idea about coming yeah. up with these bands. So why don't we add well, it? Well, was it one? Yeah. yeah. And make it. Do we have the range? Uh, make a uh, range. Yeah, I mean, Don right. and Jacob slid in with the. All right, I'll take I'll take the information from DIJ and come up with a range. Is that in range with the seventy thousand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So then I'll make a motion to open the search. And include a salary range. So the second. Okay. okay. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Looks like I have a range here. So okay. 
Is there a range on yours? Uh, from his survey. Oh, you got oh, it over there? there. Oh, okay. It's 34 to 43. No, no, no. Uh, no? Right. An hour? Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> 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 34 to 43. Per hour. Dollars per hour. Thirty-three dollars per hour. Thirty-four. Thirty-four times. Thirty-four an hour. Yeah, that's what his. Is. Seventy. Okay. So that's that's, steep, so that would probably be the minimum. I think they don't. I should think they would be hourly anyway. They would be salaried. Yeah. But yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You need to figure it out where where to start. If you just multiply it by two thousand and eighty hours. So that comes up to seventy thousand dollars. Yeah. 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 Put a range in there, you in know, the to start off yeah. at the top there. Right. 70 to 90, that's his range. That was in the. Yes. I didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's move on to. <laughs> I just said one thing with the range. We yeah. put, I assume we're going to put a salary range, not an hourly range. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That would make yeah. sense. And then can we also drop it down a bit to have a range so that way we're not. That's what I said. Not on the high side. Yeah. 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 Since we have a budget that we can. Meet that budget. Okay. Sorry, 60, to 60, to yeah. 60 to 80. Yeah. 60 to 80. Yeah. That's what we want. Yeah. Good. 60 to 80. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mentor with experience. Exactly. Yeah. Experience, knowledge, and education. Okay. Dedication. Yeah. Senior yeah. Center, oh, Library, yeah, and Fire Substation updates. Joyce, would you like to go first? I have. Fire. I have my meeting coming up on Tuesday this week. We okay. Didn't, we didn't have it. The they have a fence up? Have they started excavating anything up there? I the haven't been by a few. Mowed is, lawn is mowed yeah. and they were no, putting uh, the bills for erosion control and things. Yeah. The driveway's in. Yeah. The construction driveway's in. Nice. So it looks like there's progress happening. Okay. Uh, library, do you guys want to go? Or are you? Ready? I was trying to get my daily report up here. Oh, I can um, hold on too. So, uh, basically, uh, well, the Library Building Committee is actually meeting Monday. for the first time in a while on Monday. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but things are moving along with the, there were some delays with the, um, what do you call it? The water line. The excavation for the water line. Excavation, thank you. That was, that was the big word I was looking for, <laughs> the excavation for the, for the water lines. So I think we're a little bit behind, but I don't think That's the big set. hole on the corner here. Right yeah. With the big yeah. bucket load right yeah. next to it? Yeah. I saw six guys staring at that hole for a long time today. <laughs> yeah. <that's, laughs> it wasn't bad when they first installed it in 76, but when they came through on the drain line in the 90s, mm -hmm. that's when they kind of... Oh, when they Is it started storm the, sewer time? Is the that what they're doing? The window abatement no. started no. yesterday. No, that's all uh, water. Water time. Is this library? Yep. I think right. cool. Yeah. And when when yeah. do we think the building's coming down? Do we know? I don't know that we have an estimate. It's going back. To okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I know that last week, Gary was told two weeks to finish the abatement. Yeah. And realistically, it's not even. It's going to be way longer than two weeks on based on on what is left. So it could be two months. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Well. Two months. Well, so we'll it might not be, but it's yeah. a long time. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a better handle, I think, when we have direct dialogue with uh, the OPM on Monday night and. So okay. More to come, but it, there's no question we're experiencing some delays. Okay. Um, senior, I can let Jane do the. Uh, I update. think it's very exciting. Yeah. We have walls up and drive by. Um, trusses were delivered today, and the framing crew is really working quickly and seems to be quite competent. So the floor, the whole floor is poured. Floor is poured. Floor is poured. Yeah. It looks yeah. like a building. <laughs> um, and the um, they took the samples for the asbestos soil samples, and they also tested back beyond where they stopped finding asbestos, and they think it's fairly much contained in that. That's on that north side of the north library. Side. On the north side of Hooker. Yeah. North side of Hooker. Yeah. Good. Well, it's a smaller That's area. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not a huge area. I don't know if it's smaller than. But it's not huge. And then we have uh, one change order I like to process tonight. Um, basically, it's increased material cost to provide an additional 12 pound per square foot design load for the roof trusses. Um, and this was 
somewhere along the line it got missed to have the addition of solar panel load on the roof and it's for $3,221.90. Don't know if I get on the motion just to approve that. Normally we approve it at our finance committee, but we don't have that um, until the beginning of next month. Um, so we just wanted to kind of get the slate clean between now and the, the uh, next next meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. My only question is, solar panels weigh next to nothing now. So with the design specs are that tight that they can't support solar panels with every house. Well, they went to metal roof too. I'm not sure exactly how that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Metal roof you have your any asphalt panels. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> well, the support under it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was heavy. <laughs> All right. All those in in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then the last thing I have on our regular agenda so here is before, the. Before we leave the, uh, the building projects, there's a number of questions coming from the departments about the. Uh, inspectors fees, water and sewer fees for connections, inspections, and impact assessments for these three projects. Um, typically we waive these, but the um, department heads are just asking for clarity that we are in fact waiving all of them for all of the inspectors. Yeah, the that we waive, we waive all the fees that, that, that are under our Yeah, that, that, that would include that. the electrical. We typically yeah. allow the electrical yeah. to collect. I, I think we should wait them all. Yeah, I second that. All right, thank you. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, update on the Legion work? No. No? no it's it's going to happen yeah. Friday. Yeah. No, no, no. The sewer line was inspected. Right. Uh, that and, was all fine. and it turned out fine. So. Yeah, good. Okay, so that's good. And, okay. and the, Legion, the Legion members were there, so they were happy with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, town administrator update. Okay. Bruce so, just wants you to do the highlights. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just doing. <laughs> the, she wants a sizzle reel. Big <laughs> highlights. I'm just I've touched on a lot of this stuff. And it's here to be read. Uh, cemetery marker assessment. Uh, the project is substantially complete. Um, the. We met with the uh, the uh, um, owners of the retail marijuana uh, facility and talked about a community host agreement that uh, is still in process. Uh, we had a kickoff meeting for the municipal vulnerability preparedness grant, uh, and November six. If you could put that in your calendar, that is the community meeting. Um, that will um, have everything to do with trying to uh, get input from the community as to how the climate uh, change may or may not impact quality of life in the town of Hadley. Uh, anything having to do with agriculture, drainage, um, the, the dike. Uh, so David is having the meeting? You may be having a meeting that night, but this would be a daytime meeting. I think it's November 9th. 6th. Oh, 6th. Okay. Oh, and we're already, okay. Yeah. Personnel handbook, uh, we had our uh, intern, our assistant uh, update that. That's now under review. Capital asset study is underway now uh, for inventory of the small items for our, within our capital plan. Dish cleaning has uh, been launched. Um, Marlo Warner and I are playing phone tag with respect to the anaerobic digester. The stormwater permit, uh, we continue to work with PDPC to get the um, uh, compliance in this uh, informational brochure addresses issues of lawn maintenance and, and lawn fertilization uh, in such a way as to uh, uh, preserve community uh, water, particularly the Connecticut River. That's maybe go to the next water bill. Something we can, it's online, uh, and there's a stack of brochures downstairs in town hall. Uh, just skipping way ahead. 
Uh, we received the uh, actuarial report for OPEB, and the, um, the results are good. Uh, we saw the total liability decrease by $80,000. We saw our discount rate uh, rise from six and three quarters to, no, six, uh, up to six and three quarters, up from five and three quarters from last year, and a higher rate is a good thing. Uh, the Treasurer's approach to investing in our annual contribution netted more money than the town's overall appropriation by about $71,000. Thank you, Linda Sanderson. And uh, our total trust fund shows an increase to above 19% funding for the liability, up from almost 15% last year. So we're doing very, very well. Uh, we'll be meeting with our actuary tomorrow morning in order to chart the of course, going forward. Uh, and I am going to say that we have covered all the other issues. Okay. Announcements? Yeah, I was going to say that chicken to go at, at the Legion. You can buy tickets uh, from Legion members. It's August 25th. Pick up at 4 p.m. That's a Sunday. They're only doing one. That's, well, I got a ticket for that. There might be more than one pickup. I'm not sure. It's usually one in four. Yeah. One in four. Yeah, so usually. there's probably two. Yeah. So we'll have to call Mr. Bim Bim and see how mm -hmm. the tickets are. Yeah. I'm surprised my husband didn't bring them home. Young Men's Club's having an event September 13th, a steak dinner. Another dinner yeah. sock comes through. And uh, CPA, uh, those applications are due August 9th. That's this Friday. Uh, North Hadley Village Hall, bids are due August 24th? 27th. 27th. So, get something there. I'm trying to think if there's any other dates. Hadley Sugar Shack, are they having a bicycle event? August 10th. Yeah. August 10th, mm -hmm. this Saturday. Mm -hmm. I think that's everything I can think of. So lots to do. It's a happening town. Yeah, a lot yeah. to do. Plenty to do. School starts, I think, Soon. the 28th. Mm -hmm. Here. Before Labor Day. So. And then it's demolition derby time. <laughs> <laughs> Truck pulls around. That's right. <laughs> okay. All right. And then uh, we have an executive session. Before we go into executive session, we have one item under the Mount Holyoke Bridge. Uh, you have a volunteer to serve on the committee to draft the conservation mm -hmm. restrictions. Oh, do we? Uh, and this two, is two volunteers. I think we're. Missing. Oh, Mount Holyoke Bridge. Oh, okay. You. Yeah, and there was another one that mm -hmm. Mary was there had submitted that she was interested too. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That, and, was um, a, that was Barb uh, O'Connor as well. That's, That's why I was right. asking you earlier. I was getting confused about which. Yeah, I skipped yeah. over it because I thought the Kestrel Trust was going to be here, so I'm, I apologize for that. Yeah, we have uh, John Michkowski Jr. volunteers to serve on the committee, and then we have a couple more possible people as well. Do we want to vote on this tonight? Well, we don't even have... Do we have a... Well, or wait until we have a full list? Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll wait. Okay. Sounds like we have five to choose right now. Four or five. How, how, can I ask how many do you need? One, I think. That was it. How many are you going to be on the committee? Uh, we had someone from Castro, myself, uh, a committee member, and who else? Two more? Or what else? I forgot well, what it was. Well, a couple of community members. All right, maybe two community two, members. Two, yeah. So you're looking for one or two community yes. members? Yeah. yeah. Put my name in, David. Okay. Yeah, if you just, do you want to send a letter to him? It could just be an email. An email? Yeah. I think we should all stand in solidarity with our <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm going to. And then we, and then now we can uh, move to executive session. I'm going home. You are? Okay. I am. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to defer this to uh, September? I have. 
Do we have an executive session as the, I believe we have them scheduled at our next meeting, correct? The yes, DPW we do. DPW. Coming back, mm -hmm. so yeah. Can we do it that night as well? Yeah. If you guys want to do it then, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, okay. we, don't have to, we don't have to act on night until December 31st, so. We can talk about it whenever we, we want. <laughs> whenever <you> want. <laughs> All right, then can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I need to sign before I go. All right, so there are signatures.